everyone. Welcome to the Knitterati podcast. I'm Link Lashley and the noise in the background is one of my puppies running up the stairs. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and checking out what we're doing here. Uh, and if you're a new viewer, I hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to comment below um, and let me know what you think. So... Yeah, I should also mention, I'm actually Linkle Ashley from Knitterati Designs. So if you want to pop over and take a look at some of my patterns, you'll find them on Ravelry, Etsy and Craftsy. Uh, you'll also find me on Instagram as Knitterati Designs. Uh, you'll find me on Facebook uh, as either Linkle Ashley or I'm Knitterati Designs, but I had to use the Knitterati Knits um, URL, sorry. I'm kind of half concentrating on my sock here. And you'll also find me on Twitter as Knitterati. I am on Patreon as Knitterati. Uh, but yeah, basically you'll find all of the links uh, from this page anyway. If you look at the, the video page, you'll, you'll find a load of links just to the right. So, this week I have been to Edinburgh again, this time for the Knitting and Stitching show. So, sorry, I hope I'm not moving too fast as I'm doing this knitting. Um, I'll just try to keep it nice and slow. So, this week is going to be a little bit unusual in that I have a fair number of bits and pieces to show you in terms of new acquisitions, but also I have some videos that I'm going to put in. So some of these videos were taken at the show itself and then others were taken as I was out and about and I found some interesting shops and knitwear designers and what have you. So unfortunately the videos that I took that were, I don't know, can you call them live videos? No, not really. But the videos that I, I took that haven't been recorded here in my home they are a little bit shaky because I was trying to hold the camera. So if you find that that is difficult to watch, I would suggest that maybe they're not that long. They're maybe three minutes. Maybe just uh, look down at your own knitting for a little while and you can maybe work out what's going on just from listening. Or you can just forward through those parts a little bit. Um, as I said, I did my best with them, but at the moment I don't really have the best of equipment, which is something that I'm hoping to improve on through my Patreon. And like I said, you know, the more support I get, the better, the better I can do, the better I can make this content. So if anybody would like to see more of those videos, maybe pop over. You can support me from as little as a dollar a month and that would be a big help. So on with the reviews. Uh, Okay, so when it comes to the Knitting and Stitching show, I'd actually like to start by discussing the website. I actually find their website to have very little real information on it. Um, to be honest, I find it to be a bit frustrating because as I'm going through the list of vendors, I'd like to see maybe a little picture of what they do or, you know, something rather than just a name listed. So I don't know how other people feel about that, but you know, when you're going through a list of vendors that you're not necessarily familiar with and you don't know what they do straight off the bat, if you can just see a little image of what they'll be selling, you know, that would be a whole lot easier and it would have made it a lot easier on me to, to target where I wanted to be. Now, of course, I was going to look at all of the stalls anyway, simply because I do this podcast. But I think if I was going in, you know, because, I mean, I'm a knitter, I understand a lot of you are probably also... You know, you probably also sew or crochet or um, patchwork, the, the quilting. That was big at this show. So, I mean, I would have had very little interest in things like the quilting machines. Now, they look very, very impressive, but I have no clue what to do with them. So, <laughs> so they weren't for me. So, I guess I would have... I would have liked to have planned a bit better, certainly if I wasn't going for the podcast, just so that I could target what stalls I wanted to see. Um, also, 
I mean, there's stuff there that has nothing to do with knitting or stitching. So I got there and I had done kind of the first aisle. And next minute, my friend and I were accosted by a lady with a bronzing brush. Before I know it, she has bronzed her own legs, her own face, and now she has the brush on my face. And I kind of want to tell her to go away, but she's also just put a really dark bronzer on part of my face. So I kind of have to let her finish it, because I don't want to be going around... Sorry, I had to touch the screen there. Yeah, I don't want to go around with this one patch of bronze on my face. And by the way, lady, that is not where you put bronzer. Bronzer goes where the sun would hit you, not on the side of your face. Oi. Um, but yeah, I mean, if anybody has seen me, my skin is not the most stellar thing you've ever seen. I do have an imbalance that causes me to have uh, cystic acne. And this brush is being used on everyone. Now, I mean, fine, you're not going to catch my acne from using the brush on me and then using the brush on you. But still, it just, to me, it seems really unhygienic. So, you know, if you are going to a show like that, watch out for the crazy bronzer lady. Because I was not expecting that. I mean, it was... Had I expected her to try and actually put it on my face, I would have been stepping away a lot quicker. And to be honest, it kind of lost her a sale. I was interested that it worked on her legs. But this thing where she starts putting it on my face and stuff, no, not interested. Not going to buy with that sort of sales technique. Um, so, yeah, that was the, the non-knitting <laughs> part of the show for me. I just thought she'd be interested in, in other things that happen, but I'll try to, to keep it to knitting-related things from now on. So, you'll notice here that I am knitting on DPNs. I'm not normally a DPN knitter, and to be honest, I think I've lost my mojo a little. Um, not hugely satisfied with my technique, which is why I am continuing on with DPNs so that I might improve it. But this, this yarn is from West Yorkshire Spinners. There we go. And I cannot for the life of me recall the name of the stall that I bought it from, and I'm so sorry. I will put it in the show notes, and I will. I have some pictures of it, so I will put the pictures up on Instagram. And I know it had a really cute name, because I was looking at it just a minute ago. Darn it. But anyhow, there was a very lovely lady on the stall, and she was very good with helping me pick my, my sock colours. This yarn... Unfortunately, I've lost the ball band off this one, which sucks because I think it was their their sock of the month or, some, or their colorway of the month or something like that. But yeah, this yarn smells amazingly sheepy and it is worth purchasing it purely because it smells so sheepy. So if I just turn this around here so you can see the ball band on this one a little bit better. So 35% blue face Lester and 75% wool. So that, that would be 35% out of the 75%, obviously there's still 25% nylon. If you add them all up, you get more than 100%. So, yeah. Just in case anybody hasn't had their coffee yet, that is 35% blue face Lester, um, 40% some other type of wool, and 25% nylon. That's how, how I interpret this. The smell is so good that my puppies, who are normally, I mean, they'll have a sniff at my yarn, but they are actually interested in lying next to this so that they can keep their nose up against it. Uh, and even, I mean, if I have it in a project bag and I open the bag, you just get this, this really wonderfully sheepy smell. I, I can't describe it any better. I'm, if you haven't knit with wool before, and you're interested in trying maybe a sock yarn or something like that, try this. <laughs> it is worth it just for the smell. And if you're a knitter who puts things like lavender scents in the bag with it, I know you might be doing that to keep away uh, insects. But if you can, give this a try without it, because it is even my hands smell of it when I'm knitting with it. Maybe that isn't for everybody.
absolutely love it. So these are my West Yorkshire spinners. Okay, I'm just going to show you what I've been knitting because I, I wasn't supposed to cast on, but I cast on anyway. So just to get a little better focus. Like I said, as you can see here, my DPN mojo is off because I've gotten laddering and I don't normally get laddering. If I was likely to actually wear these socks, I would go back and fix it. But as I keep telling you, I'm not a sock knitter. I can completely understand the appeal of sock knitting. I mean, these fit in my bag really, really nicely. And like I said, I love the smell. But I just can't bring myself to wear socks. You know, it's just not going to happen. But I know that some of you are sock knitters and you enjoy it. And I figured you might like to see how this was knitting up. So this is why I've done these. So I started out... Now I'm going to have to double this. I started out with 16 stitches on two needles, so that's 32 stitches. And then I increased to 28 stitches on each needle, so that would be 56 stitches. And my one of my dogs is sighing. I don't know if you heard that. She's like, yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Knitters care. And then for the first time, this is actually a pink colour, by the way. Uh, it's coming out a lot redder here for some reason. But it is actually a very nice bright pink. So yeah, this is my first time trying a German short row heel. I normally do short row heels, but this is specifically the, the German version. I don't know, does it turn out like this for everyone? I do not like. See all these little holes? Yeah. I definitely don't like. And I would have pulled this out again if I were going to wear it because this is just, if I just do my normal short rows, I don't get this. You know, I don't get these holes. I get a nice, I have one here. I just stick this on my hand. See, here's one I've done before and it's, I suppose there are, if you stretch it, there are small holes, but it's just a lot neater and it seems to suit me a lot better. So yeah, I won't be trying, unless, unless you all think that I should, unless you're going to tell me that no Lincoln, it's, it's you, it's the way you've done it. I don't think the German short road heel is for me. But I am persisting anyway. I've done the same on this one, just to get a little bit more practice in and it hasn't turned out much better, even though, well, there is still some laddering, but it has improved. The laddering has definitely improved on this sock. Look, it's hardly on this side at all. So I've definitely improved in terms of my my knitting with DPNs. It's amazing how quickly I've kind of lost that skill. Because, I mean, I don't use it that much. If I was using it, I'd normally use it for hat knitting or something like that. Maybe it's because I'm just using the two needles plus a third to knit onto. I wonder if that's what's causing the, the issue. Sorry, I've just realised that I was probably moving quite quickly. I'm sorry. I'll do my best to slow it down a bit. But... Yeah, I'm going to finish this sock. And it's not the iron, it's me. I, and next time I will try a different heel. Definitely. But, just so you can see, this is... I've nearly finished the second sock. Okay, so I'm coming up on the ribbing section. Just try and focus that a bit better. And I have all of this left. These do fit. I've had the first sock on. These definitely fit. Now, they're not particularly long, but they are taller than an ankle sock. Um, and just so you can see it next to the original size. So there is quite a bit of yarn in here. Certainly for me, I would get at least two pairs of socks out of this, which is good because it'll give me a chance to work on my DPNs and my heels. So yeah, I think this is quite good value. I can't remember what I paid for it though. You know, I have to start writing this stuff down because what happens is I get into, I get the yarn fumes and I get into a bit of a frenzy and I forget 
that I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, they love this on the podcast. I don't forget that I have a podcast. I don't forget about you guys. But I forget that you might like to know how much I'm spending. <laughs> um, I want to say these were about eight pounds, maybe eight pounds something. Uh, which, to be honest, for the amount of yarn that I've gotten, seems very, very fair. Especially if you're going to get two pairs of socks out of it. And, you know, if you're a prolific sock knitter, or even if you just get one pair of socks out of it and they go all the way up to your knees, which I would imagine this might, I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely worth a try anyway, if only for the smell. The smell was fantastic. But that's enough about this. And now that I've shown you my socks, oh, sorry, in case you're wondering what this is, um, I just wanted to mark which side was the front because I don't necessarily like to have stitch markers when I'm working with DPNs. I find it annoying because the stitch marker then starts to fall off the end. So if I'm only using two needles, I don't really need it, but I do need to mark which side is the front. So that's why I just have a, a little piece of yarn dangling through there. What I should have shown you at the beginning was my own work in progress, which I'm doing with yarn from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So this was bought a few months ago. I did not get to work on my fabulous mosaic design this week. I just didn't have time because there was a lot going on. I know it seems like there shouldn't be a whole lot of preparation for me to go to these shows, but the enabler was really, really good and he made sure that I went shopping and I got my hair done, and I got my nails done. And yeah. So we ended up doing quite a bit of different bits and pieces, just getting me prepared and making sure that I actually had clothes and, and what have you. So, I'll just push this along. I've made some progress. I think I was about here last week and I was knitting on this on the, on the plane. So you can see that I have, I have made a little bit. So I am hoping to have this done by next week because I would like to get the pattern out. This is a cowl. Just in case you, you didn't see last week's one. Um, and I'm quite happy that... Okay, so if you see from here to here, this grey colour is running through. So there's two colours in every section. So in going from one section to the next with one colour, I think that's only using maybe 10 grams of yarn. Now, I haven't weighed it yet, so I'm not certain. But I kind of like that it's using a smallish amount because I was reading this morning about people preparing their, uh, their advent calendars for sale for this year. And I think they normally come with about 10 grams. So this might be a suitable project for somebody who's looking to, to find a nice way to use some of those. So at the moment, this is all of the colours that I have. Yeah. This is a little bit messy. But yeah, these are all of the colours that I have and they're all in it. So you can see I do have quite a bit left of the grey and the green and what have you. I'll probably lengthen the cowl because I have so much left. I wasn't expecting to have so much, so I'm quite happy with that. But yeah, there it is. There's my cowl, and it, it is um, specifically for mini skeins, including any sock yarn that you might have left over if you want to work it in. It's perfect for that. I have to say, I really like, like this. I'm going to finish that sock today, and then I'm going to get back to working on this so that I can get the pattern done, because it's, it's easier than it looks. Yeah, let me just see if I can get a nice little focus on that. There we go. You see the two color effect. So yeah, I'm gonna start or I'm gonna stop going on about my my own design. I do worry sometimes that I go on about them a little bit too much, but you know, if you want to know more about them, do definitely tell me about it. Because I could go on about my own designs all day <laughs> if I didn't feel like I was boring you guys. So yeah, that was the only the only thing I'll be showing today. I think that is non. Um, non-knitting and stitching show. So I'm just going to come back to this sock for a second because what you can see here are some new DPNs. So, yeah, there we go. These are Addies. Let's see if I can get a little better focus. 
So yeah, two seven five millimeter. They cost eight fifty. And these are. See how they have lace and basic on there. Now I picked these up because I went, ooh, have sock yarn, no sock needles, want to cast on the socks so that I can show you. So I actually cast these on in Edinburgh, by the way. I was at the show on Thursday and I cast these on Friday morning. And should you know what? Because I kind of like having the stickers on that pack and it keeps kind of falling off. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna knit to the end of this row. See if you can notice the difference in the tips. This is all one set. So we have lace tips and we also have basic tips. Which can be a little annoying, but is also really useful. Sorry, I should slow down. Actually, you know what? This isn't going to work. I'll stop being lazy. That's enough, guys. Okay. Again, my neighbour has opened his window. They really like my neighbour. So if anything goes on on his side, they want me to know about it. There we go. I'm sorry, I'm just going to pause this for a minute. Okay. So here we can see the lace tips. Now, what do they mean by basic? So if we swap this over, on this end, we have the basic tips. So I'll just show you the two to compare. Okay. So you'll notice that when I'm knitting here, I have one lace and one basic. The reason for that being, when you knit part of your sock with the lace tip, which I quite like because it, it works well, it's not splitting the yarn, it's nice and sharp. I do enjoy a nice sharp tip. But when I come back around to start knitting on this end, sorry, that's not what I want. Yeah, it's, it's focusing on the sock. Now, sorry guys. Okay, so when I come around to knit, what I have on this end is now the basic tip. Now that doesn't bother me too much, as long as I remember to choose which tip to knit with when I'm beginning each section of the round. If I forget, it becomes a little bit annoying. But it's actually, it's, it's not odd or anything to, to knit with two different tips. That doesn't bother me at all. So... You know, your mileage may vary with these, but I do find that I have to remember to turn my needle. So I'll just show you what normally happens here when I get to the end. Okay. So what I would normally do here is I would just swap that needle like that. Turn this over and carry on. But I am basic tip up. So I have to remember now to swap it over so that I have my lace tip ready to go. Okay, so I bought those needles, or these needles even, on the Manos del Uruguay stall. Well, I, I've been calling it the Manos del Uruguay stall. It is actually the rooster yarn stall. And now I'm going to show you some other things that I bought there, so I'm just going to stick these away. I have to say, I really enjoyed the Rooster Yarn Stall. It's where I bought most of my items. So, we have one, two, and I'll show these all a little more in a little more detail in a minute. Three. Four. Five. Six. So yeah, I bought six skeins there. I did say that I enjoyed that stall, didn't I? Yeah. So I'm just going through my bag of tricks here because I have some, some of the flyers, I think. 
Okay. So yeah, I bought these from, and now I've moved, there we go. I bought these from Rooster Yarns, and the ladies there were lovely. If you take a look on my Instagram feed, you'll see that I took a picture of some of the shawls that they had there. And there's actually a collection of pictures there, so if you swipe across, you'll be able to see that I think there's at least three or four images of the shawls that they've knit with this yarn. So there's their details if you're looking for it. Um, so for most people, I didn't take a, a free pattern because I wasn't going to knit it. But if you bought one of these skeins, they were giving a free pattern to go with it so that you'd have something to knit. These patterns were lovely and basic. So if this was your first time using the pretty yarn and you just wanted something very simple, this was the place to be. And they've also given me a little leaflet. I can't really see the whole thing here. A handmade story. Just saying about how the ladies in Uruguay are making or are dyeing this yarn. So it's actually, you know what, I shouldn't really show that just in case because I don't know if it's if there's a copyright on it or whatever. But what it says is that it's kettle dyed in small pots. Um no two skeins are exactly the same, which you would expect from hand dyed yarn. Each skein of yarn has a tag with the signature of the woman who made it and the location where it was made. Okay, so let's take a little look at that. So we'll just look at this fabulous green and it is and it's squishy and it's wonderful and they are all like that. They are all squishy and wonderful. So if we take a, a closer look at the tag here, Merino Superwash. It feels a lot nicer than that, to be honest. I seem to be coming back around to Merino. I went off Merino for a long time because I wasn't getting that nice squish. But this, I'm... Yeah, I really enjoy squishing this, mm. <laughs> I have to say. So you can see the colour there is Arboretum. So I think that's the colour. Yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, it's Merino is the base. And then Arboretum is the colourway. So... I am not going to try to read where that location is, but I believe the name is Valeria. So Valeria, thank you very much. I will enjoy working with this. Actually, I can't wait. The colour is pretty true. I'll show you the colour now again in a second. Oh, and it even tells you to knit two rows from one and two from the other so that you don't get a problem with the two not matching exactly. So the colours that you're seeing are slightly washed out compared to the colours that I'm seeing. This is a fantastic kind of a foresty green. And then all the way to, I don't know what I'd call this. It, it looks a little more minty on the, on the screen. This is not even a grass green. No, it's definitely not a grass green. I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to try to tell you what it is because I'm clearly terrible at that. I think that should you have the opportunity, you should actually just go and look at some of this yarn. Um, what were the price points on these? I don't think I spent more than £17 on a skein. And some of them I think were maybe 15 So the lace ones might have been 15 I hope I'm not getting this too wrong. But certainly... They are not the most expensive of yarns that I've ever bought. So we'll just move this one to one side. Now, for some reason, the colour on this is showing a lot truer to what it is. And this is the denim colourway. Again, this is lace weight, superwash. It's the same marina base as the green one that I've just shown you. And it is fabulous. You know, I'm still trying to get through the yarn that I bought at um, the yarn festival. And I haven't gotten there yet. But I can't wait to cast this stuff on too. In fact, I probably would have cast this on already if I had had a ball winder with me. I would have bought some more needles. <laughs> oh, come on, it's not just me. We've all been there. <laughs> now, I would love to tell you what this is. But if any of you have seen my PSA, my public service announcement... 
because of trying to squish yarn into my bag and getting it caught in the zip. And this is my fault. You know, I'm always very, you know what it looks like. You don't need me to tell you that this is, it got caught in the zip and, and, and it broke. But on the upside, I had all of this caught in there too. And I only have one. And I'll be able to, to work those together. It'll be fine. But yes, ladies and gents, please don't ever pack your yarn so close to the zip. It's just not right. And had I not been in a hurry to get to, um, I went to see the statue of uh, this little dog, Greyfriars Bobby. And I was in such a hurry to make sure that I had everything packed so that I could go and find this statue of this little dog whose owner died and he looked after the grave for 14 years. Poor little puppy just sitting there. And yeah, I'm not going to go into it again because I get very upset about the idea of this sweet little dog sitting there waiting for his owner. But yeah, I was in a rush to get there and make sure that I got everything done before I had to get my flight back. And I just shoved it in. Oh, and I'm so lucky that it didn't do more damage than just that. But yeah, I, I mean, this colour, the cream against, you know, it's just the contrast of this cream against the darker greens and purples. I'm, I really want to see how this knits up. I know, I know I'm saying that about all of them. But this looks so pretty in the skein. And I know sometimes they look pretty in the skein and then they're disappointing when you knit them. But I have a good feeling. So, yeah. These are, these are likely all going to become shawls, by the way. Uh, these two, I think, are the same. These are slightly heavier fingering weight. Well, I would call them a fingering weight. I would say... I would call it a heavy fingering weight. There we go. Almost. Okay, guys, I will replace the camera as soon as I can. <laughs> it might take me a little while, though. Um, yeah, so I would call it a heavy fingering weight. Maybe slightly heavier, but I have two of them. They're going to make a shawl. So this is 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide. Or polyamide. Yeah, sorry. I, for some reason, I, I have it in my head that this is polyamide. It clearly isn't. But I always pronounce it polydamide. I don't know why. It sounds like something that you'd put on your weeds. So, there you go. I, I shall stop ranting now. Machine wash. I have never machine washed something that I've hand knit, except for one jumper that I made in acrylic. And I put it through the dryer and it killed it. And it was fantastic. They've actually, somebody has gone to the bother of saying, who dyed this? Again. Ooh, joy in Spanish. So if anybody speaks Spanish, you'll actually know how to pronounce that. <laughs> if it was in German or Irish, I would be much, much more able to work out how I should be saying this. But yeah, an easy care yarn. And it's still, I'm getting a fair bit of, there's not as much squish certainly as some of the others, but it, I would be fine with this against my skin and if I'm putting something against my skin and I'm making it for myself I want it soft I want it squishy you know because you want to feel fantastic while you're wearing it and speaking of feeling fantastic while you wear things I mentioned last week that I hadn't blocked my midsummer shawl yet and that I was bringing it anyway and I did and it was wonderful so I am going to block it <laughs> it is going in today I swear uh, I will I'll put it into soak today so hopefully there will be pictures soon. But if any of you are going to knit it and you don't want to block it, that's fine. It was wonderful because I ended up sitting outside having my lunch on the Saturday. There was this wonderful... Actually, you know what? I'm going to talk about Saturday a little bit later because I have some video to go with that. So I'm just going to show you one last skein here. There we go. And, oh, I seem to have lost the thing off this as well. Okay, but I would, I would say that this is lace weight and also most of what I bought is lace weight. I'm so surprised that I lost the little tag off this. Oh, and now I'm sorry because 
I've lost two of them and I want to know who knit them. Oh well. I'll still enjoy working with it. <laughs> I'm very curious to see how this will work. How is it focusing? Okay. It will either be completely disastrous or absolutely fantastic. And I refuse to believe that it's going to be disastrous. You know, I mean, you buy these things and they look great in the skein and then when you go to actually knit with them, you find that the colours don't work as well because, you know, you see two colours next to each other in the skein and they're not necessarily next to each other in your project, depending on what your gauge is and how it knits up. Look at him, that's a nice little green down here. But yes, I am confident. Look. I am confident that this is going to work. And again, oh, such squish. Anyhow, I do have some footage of the show and one of the lovely ladies gave an explanation of what they do there. So I'm going to stop here and put in the, the rooster yarns. Well, they're not rooster yarns exactly, are they? Are they rooster yarns? Yeah, I have a lot of yarn here to dig underneath. And they're just Rooster. So one of the lovely ladies from Rooster will tell you all about what they're doing there. I'll see you in a minute. Hi guys, I'm here at the Knitting and Stitching Show in Edinburgh uh, and I'm here with uh, Rooster Yarns. Um, so this is, I think, the best stall that I've seen since I got here. So I'm just hoping that uh, the proprietor here can tell us a little bit about the yarns that, that you have on sale. Okay, what we've got today is Manos del Uruguay yarn, which is hand dyed by ladies in Uruguay um, as cooperatives. Lots of different weights. We've got very chunky wool classica, uh, Aran weight, double knitting, four ply down to two ply lace. It's all 100% wool, solid colours as well as mixed spaced colours. Yeah. So. There's um, some really beautiful variegated yarns here so if anybody is in the area I would definitely suggest uh, dropping by. This is stall E59 and um, do you have a website? We do, yeah, www.roosteryarns.com Okay, great, thank you very much and hopefully <laughs> hopefully I'll be showing some of your yarns. I've actually, you can see this bag here, this is mine, this is coming home with me. So I'll be giving you a review of those in the, in the coming podcast, okay? And we're back. Okay, so you remember this yarn from earlier, the West Yorkshire Spinners? I've gone back and checked and I bought it from the Woolabaloo stall where I also bought these. No, sorry. You can hear my bag of tricks is sliding down next to me. So these are also West Yorkshire spinners. We have 80% Falkland wool and 20% mulberry silk. So I'll just try and get you a better look here. So colourway seems to be Portobello. And you can't really, there you can get a, a better, better look here. So again, West Yorkshire spinners. Oh, look at that. So 800 meters in a skein, hand wash. Do not spin, do not tumble dry. Fair enough. It's the usual, usual instructions, but it's always good when they put it on there. Exquisite. And to be fair, yes, the colour is. The colour is showing up slightly darker here compared to what it is. But it is still, and that sound is one of my puppies drinking. I am so sorry that they're so involved today, but I'm disinclined to give out to them because they have been so sick and it's nice to see them up and, and moving around. So yeah, this... I mean... There's, I know some of that is the way it's skeined. I can't explain why I, why I enjoy doing this, but I want to see how much it pulls itself back. But yeah, it's, it is not as squishy as the Manos, 
but I wouldn't expect it to be because of the the wool content. Um, the man also, I think, what was that? Alpaca, probably. But for wool, this, and I want to sniff it, sorry. Yeah, it does have that lovely, lovely smell to it again. And because of that, I am looking forward to working with it. I mean, it goes without saying that if I bought it, I want to work with it. You know, I mean, I keep saying that, but I, I deliberately bought all of this stuff. I don't look for, um, I don't look for stuff to be given to me for free or for stuff to be sent to me for free, because if it's free, I can't give a proper review. And it's important to me that I give you all a proper review. So I will let you know how this works up. I'm thinking I probably have to do a Shetland shawl with it, all things considered. Although this is Falkland wool, not Shetland. So yeah, I don't actually, I mean, everything that I buy is going to end up in a shawl. But this, I think, needs to be something, because it's all one colour, I can do a proper heavy lace pattern. So if you have a, a yarn that has a lot of different colours in it, so it's highly variegated, if you do a lace pattern in it, it will often get lost and you're not able to see the lace pattern. So when I'm doing shawls like that, like yes, there will be lace in them, but they're gonna be, you know, big eyelet sections or something like that, something where it's not going to, where, where you can actually see all of the work that you're putting into it, you know what I mean? So because this is all one color, I can actually do something that's just a little bit more complicated this stuff probably isn't going to be used in a pattern for beginners, although I am hoping to put out a series of, of beginner patterns just to introduce to shawl shaping and lace, but there'll be more coming on that in the coming weeks. So yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what I come out with. You know, hmm, I wonder if this logo could serve as some sort of inspiration. Maybe, maybe not. But yes, now is not the time for me to sit here working out my my shawl inspiration. And I do have another I do have another shawl in the works that I'm hoping to receive yarn for at some point soon. But that is different. That is a project done with a specific dyer quite deliberately. But again, <laughs> more on that in the future. So I'm actually going to stop here and I'm going to put in a video of the teapot trust that I that I've taken um, the ladies there again were very very kind and interested in letting you all hear about what they're doing there so I'm gonna let them tell you I'll be back again in a minute hi everyone sorry for the shaky camera work so I am here with the teapot trust hello there we provide art therapy for children who are in hospital or have long-term medical conditions. So we've got a big array of merchandise here um, with a tea theme or perhaps an art and crafting theme because um, all our children get to do some arts and crafts in hospital under the care of an art therapist. Okay, so this is a really fantastic stall. This is one of my favourite stalls that I've seen here today. Uh, if any of you have been to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, they were also there. So definitely, if you're around, take a look, pop over and see what's going on. Okay, talk to you soon. And we're back. Okay, so you can see, I found somebody with needle tips on sale. And I bought one of everything. Uh, I actually bought two of some things, I think. So, just give you a quick look. You can see what the prices are like. I would imagine that this is somebody who is carrying the Knit Pro needles and I do normally use Knit Pros so I have all of the cords to go with these, with the cables even. And I'd imagine that they were getting rid of them perhaps. Um, I can't see why else they'd sell off some of these because some of these are in like four and a half and five millimetres. So yeah, you can see better than half price. So as soon as I saw these, I stopped. The thing is, they didn't really seem to be a knitting stall. Maybe that's why they were selling them off. They seem to be more kind of, 
you know, little bits and pieces that you might have for sewing. I couldn't even say that, that they had knitting notions. That, this is another thing. There were very, very few people there that had any sort of, um, any sort of progress keepers or stitch markers or anything like that. I saw some, you know, the little plastic ones that you get, you know, you get a big bag of them for like a pound, which wasn't really what I was looking for. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll make my own. Uh, I think I saw one, maybe two stalls doing beads, but they were seed beads. So there wasn't really, you know, even if they were doing beads, they didn't have a selection of different clips or wire or anything like that that I could use with them. So even though I was hoping to to go and get at least the making of some, it didn't happen. But anyhow, look at that, four and a half mils down to two. And I shouldn't say mil. Sorry, the scientist in me is like that it's not mil, it's millimetre. Because a mil is a um, a measurement for liquid. But yeah, there. I can be pedantic at times. So that's four and a half. Five. Uh, what are you? I think you're fives or five and a half. Fives. Now, four and a half in cubics. I've knit with cubics before, but not much because I think they're seven mils, millimeters. <laughs> Sorry. And I don't have much call to work with those, maybe for a hat or something in the winter, but yeah, I don't really. Sorry, that's my tummy again. I don't really use them for much. So now that I have four and a half, so I'm curious to see how they'll go. I actually didn't find a difference with the seven millimeters. It made no difference to me at all whether I was using the traditional ones or whether I was using square ones. What I do like about these though is that the four and a half millimeter is printed very clearly on the needle because on the round ones, it's not printed on them at all. And then I end up having to go and work out where my needle, are they called needle gauges? You know, you pop the needle in it and it tells you what size it is. Yeah, mine gets left all over the house. You would think that I would keep it in one place where it belongs, but no. So yeah, it is definitely better when it's printed on the needle. Eights. Fifteens. I would never have bought a pair of fifteens, I think, had they been full price. I don't know that I will ever use these. But you know what? They were 15s, they were three pounds, and I was not leaving them there. <laughs> I also got a set of nines. Again, I don't know if I'll ever have cause to use them, but they're tools and they're always good to have. These sevens, so I now have a set of round sevens to go with my cubic sevens. And a set of five and a halves in cubics. So, those are just a few extra bits that I got. And then one final item. Actually, no, I have two final items. I have this. There we go. So you can see I paid £17. 22 euro, that doesn't seem like a great... Um, certainly if I bought it in euro, I don't think that I would have been hugely happy. So this is Knitting Pattern Essentials. I'm just trying to adjust this a bit. Now, I haven't opened this, but as a designer, it kind of seemed like something that I might find interesting, so I bought it. There wasn't a great selection of knitting books. I mean, there was one place that was selling books that I saw, and they had a little bit of crochet, a little bit of knitting, a little bit of sewing, you know, a few bits here, bits here and bits there, but they're... Their knitting section was actually quite small and this was by far for me the most interesting book that was in there actually no that's not fair there were some other books about knitting from the center out and what have you but yeah this was because I have weight restrictions coming home and I knew that I basically filled my bag with yarn I was only going to be able to get the one book and this was it so when I finally get around to reading it I'll let you know how it goes. So there we go, also by Sally. Warm knits, cool gifts. Hmm. So yeah, if you want a copy, maybe try pottercraft.com, which sounds all very hurry.
very Harry Potterish. There we are. And now the last item that I'm going to show you is this. I have never before gotten uh, a knitting kit. And I've wanted to try mittens, you know, the Latvian style, because it'll be something new for me. Although I am seeing quickly that I need to work on my DPN skills before I get into that. So, in this box, and I'm not going to talk about it too much because... Okay, I'm probably not going to get to knit this until next winter. Because, let's face it, it's going to be getting too warm now to work with wool like that. Or at least for me, my hands get clammy and it starts to felt and it's not good. So we have, actually I shouldn't show you too much, knit like a Latvian. And then a recipe for the mittens. And then that's it. So this is basically the pattern. And I hope I've moved that fast enough so that, <laughs> so that there's no infringing. Actually, yeah, I'll show you this. There. So that's basically the pattern. And what they should look like. But it turns out that I need one and a half millimeter needles to knit this. And although I have one millimeter, I do not have one and a half. Now, I know that I can, I'm gonna have to work out the gauge anyway, but I'm not inclined to move too far from the one and a half millimeter because I have no idea how much a standard set of these mittens with a standard needle, so with the gauge that they're providing, uh, actually, do they provide a proper gauge? I'll just see. I know they tell you to work out your own. No, I don't think they do. Sorry, guys. Don't know what happened there. But as I was saying, I don't think they provide a gauge for these. So, I don't know how much of this yarn I actually need. Is it tight on yarn? Is there more than enough yarn? I don't know. And it makes me very uncomfortable. Actually, you can't really see those. There are two black skeins in here too. It makes me very uncomfortable about starting into the project when I don't know how much a standard, excuse me, how much yarn a standard set would use and how tight I'm likely to be on yarn if I, if I just do my own gauge, which could turn out to be much larger than the original. So, like I said, I probably won't start in on this for quite a while, even though I am interested in giving the colour work a go. But this kit costs £12. So, just to try out a new technique, for me, I think it was good value. If you are not an experienced knitter, don't even think about it. Uh, or rather, by all means, buy the kit and put it to one side. There is a lot of colour work going on in here and the pattern, it's a recipe. So if you're not comfortable with working out your pattern as you go, I have a feeling, and like this is just, you've seen what I've seen basically, but I have a feeling that this is not for the beginner knitter at all. I don't think it's fair to expect a beginner knitter to work out this amount of, of gauge and what have you. and. I mean, if I change my gauge, then I have to work out how to change this colour work to go with it. And yeah, by all means, they are beautiful. And the, the samples on the stall were absolutely fantastic, which is what sold me on it. But if you are a beginner, by all means, buy it and then put it in a corner somewhere and forget about it until you have until you are very confident with your skills with this pattern. Because if you, if you just even read the pattern, if you don't understand what it's saying, this isn't something that you're going to work out as you go, basically. Okay, so that's the stuff. Is that everything that I bought? It's all of the knitting stuff that I bought. Okay, so as I was saying before, on the Saturday, I actually, I'll go back to knitting on my sock while I'm talking to you here. So on the Saturday, I went for a wander to find um, Grey Forest Bobby. Everybody should do that, by the way. 
definitely worth it. That is a little dog who deserves to be recognised. Um, so yeah, in order to get there, I went through this market. And now you see, this is where my laddering has happened because that's not... So sorry about the focus, guys. But yeah, I walked through this market. Grass market? Yeah, I think that was it, the grass market. Um, there are images on my Instagram. And actually, those of you who follow me on Instagram may have already seen part of the next video. In this market, not in one of the stalls, in one of the proper shops, um, was this guy called Bill Baber Knitwear Designs. You have to visit this shop, guys. I mean, as I say in the upcoming video, I know we're knitters. We're probably not that inclined to purchase knitwear when we could make it ourselves. But the prices that he was asking for and the quality of the work, I'm actually sorry that I didn't buy one of the little jackets. You see, what got me with the little dresses? The dresses were gorgeous and I really wanted one, but just with the, the way that I'm shaped at the moment, I didn't feel that it was going to work for me. But I am sorry that I didn't buy one of the little jackets and he has matching jackets to go with the dresses and yeah, it's fantastic. I have to say, I really enjoyed the time I spent in that shop. He is a great man to talk to, both on a personal level, but also as a knitter. So... Even if you are a knitter and you think, no, oh, no, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. They are really, really... Come on now, guys, settle down. They are really on edge today. But yeah, both as just to speak to on a personal level and as a, to speak to as a knitter, he's a great guy to talk to. You know, he's the sort of person that you'd love to go and sit down and have a coffee with. I thought anyway. So yeah, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to let you watch the video while I answer the door. So enjoy and I'll be back in a minute. Okay everyone, I hope you can hear me. We are here in the Bill Baber knitwear design shop. I was looking for Grey Ferrars Bobby and I've come across this shop and I have to say the stuff that's in here is fabulous. Now I'm not one and I know you're all knitters, we're all knitters so we're not necessarily one for buying our knitwear but it is, it is very difficult to pass up this shop. The little dresses, I don't want to show too much because obviously these are copyright designs but I'll just put that there and take a little step back so you can see the whole thing. Isn't that just wonderful? And the pricing is so fair. I'm not sure what the pricing on that one is, but I've seen some of the little dresses. They're less than 80 pounds. You really can't look. Look at that little tunic, less than 60 pounds, 59 pounds. You really can't pass it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And then you have, I hope it's coming across properly. You have the little de detailing at the neckline here. Fantastic. You couldn't buy the yarn for the price that's being asked here. And the colours, if we just step back and just look at the range of colour there. Fantastic. So I'm just taking you through the shop. Look at the, see the cabling detail on this. Fantastic. And these, I mean, they're they're sturdy. I think some of these are linen blends. Irish linen, I've been told. So they're, you know, they're good. You're going to get good wear out of them. You're not going to have that pilling issues and oh, look. And the colour, the colour combination, it's orange, but it's not too orange because it's mixed in with a darker colour. And I actually really like where it is as well. We're... We're near one of the markets here, or just off one of the markets. So there's lots of lovely places for coffee and what have you. 
Again, I'm going to avoid the mirror. <laughs> you don't need to see me. Look, actually that little outfit here with the linen dress, I'm actually going to try and convince my friend to buy it. My friend, the lovely girl, who you know I've, I've brought to Edinburgh with me. Amazing. So I'm just going to show you the machine here. So these are actually the hands of Bill Baber. <laughs> and this is, I mean, this is a workshop. So he is basically, you know, working on the, the clothes that you see here. So you can come in, you can talk to him, you can bend his ear for an age about your podcast like I've just done. <laughs> but you can really see what's happening. You know, this is professional crafting at its best, how it should be done on a level where you can see what's happening. It's not happening in a faceless factory in China somewhere. You can see where the stuff is coming from. And for the work that goes in them, I mean, yes, they are machine knit. They're not hand knit, but there is still work in that. And I have to say it's it's definitely worth it. So again, this is Bill Baber Knitwear Design. If you're in Edinburgh, I would definitely, definitely pop in and take a look. Just, I was just about to sign off, but look at the detailing on the bottom of that. That's fantastic. Okay, guys, there we go. And we're back. So I hope that you enjoyed um, my... I'm going to say I hope you enjoyed my time in Edinburgh, but I hope you enjoyed hearing about my time in Edinburgh. Uh, if there is anything that you want more details on, please do let me know. Uh, I feel as though, I always feel as though I've left something out. I know, and even though I, I work through it and I make notes, I still, I always feel like I've left something out. Um, certainly, if, you're, if you are visiting Bill Baber at the grass market, uh, there's also some lovely areas to sit outside and bring your knitting. So you can sit outside there and enjoy a coffee or some food. Uh, I think I went to a place called the Black Bull. I had some very tasty nachos and I met a dog. Actually, that, that is something that I love about Edinburgh. Everybody has their dog. It's like they get up for the morning, they put the lead on the dog and the dog goes with them. Fan-freaking-tastic. I loved it. And because the dogs are out all the time, they are so well behaved. It's amazing. Kudos to the people of Edinburgh. So, yeah, I... I did, I really enjoyed myself that day because, like I said, I got to sit in the open air. I wore my midsummer shawl and I was so glad I had it because it got a little bit, just a little bit cool when I sat down. Uh, so that kept me nice and snuggly and it didn't matter that I hadn't blocked it. It still looked great. So, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Uh, you'll have noticed by now that I've... Actually, you know what? I was going to say I've already put up the... The logo for the technical section but no i won't be that lazy <laughs> i won't start the technical section yet um so yeah like i said if you have any questions please do comment uh if there's something about this video that you disliked by all means tell me i can't fix it if you don't let me know so as i've already said fortunately i keep saying so a lot don't i it's not sewing it's knitting but yeah, you can find me here, you can find me on Instagram, on Ravelry, on Facebook. Oh, there is the Knitterati group on Ravelry, that is K-N-I-T-T-E-R-A-T-T-I. -T 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 -I. Uh, as I've mentioned a few times, you can also find me on Patreon, there will be a link in the description. And I also have a Knitterati Glitterati newsletter, so if you'd like to join up, uh, it's you get a free pattern and then it's basically just... A monthly email letting you know uh, what I'm up to and any offers that might be going on at the time so again so sorry that has turned into a very annoying habit and see what I mean about these needles I had forgotten to turn it and I was about to, to try with this tip and this one is much better uh, yeah that's about it. I will put up the show notes. You know what? I've been neglecting to put up show notes lately and I'm so sorry. It's just when I don't see any feedback on them, I wonder if people are actually getting any use. But because I have so many different people mentioned in this podcast, I will put up some show notes on Ravelry in the Niterati group. 
and that way you can take a look at, at everybody that I've been speaking about. And yeah, the newsletter link you'll find in the description as well. Okay, so if you're not interested in the technical section, thank you so much for watching this far. Please do like and subscribe and even share the video if you've enjoyed it. It really helps me get out there and it helps me to grow the community. And the more of us that there are, the better, you know. Uh, we can start to do some knit-alongs or perhaps some competitions. But yeah, um, definitely if you can help me get out there, that'd be fantastic. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the technical section, today I'm going to do increasing. So the focus is going to be on the knit front and back increase, which I don't think I've done already. But I will also do, last week I did the knit one below brioche stitch. This week I'm going to do the knit one below increase. Okay, so for those of you who are interested, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, and we're back for the technical section. So, as you can see, I'm still working on my sock, so I figured I'll just use my sock to show you this week's increases. So we'll start with the knit front and back. I have a feeling that I may have covered this already, but it'll only take a minute, so we'll cover it again. So to knit front and back, you knit. So you have a new stitch on the right needle, and your old stitch is still on the left needle. So you've just knit into the front, and then you do the knit into the back. So there's the back of the stitch. Try and refocus. Okay, I think that's as good as it's getting. So we then knit into the back of the stitch. And then you you allow the stitch to drop from the left needle. So I should actually explain again. When you knit, this is knitting into the front of the stitch. And then back here, this is knitting into the back of the stitch, okay? So you just need to make sure that you know the difference between the two of those. And it will take you a few minutes just to get used to putting your needle into the back of the knit stitch. So don't get too frustrated if this is the first time you're trying it. So you knit, you keep one stitch on the right needle, okay? So your new stitch is now on the right needle, your old stitch is on the left needle. And then bring the needle down and it does take a bit of practice sometimes. See, sometimes that'll happen. So the stitch off the left needle will pop over. So you just put it back. Or the stitch on the right needle will pop off and you'll have to start again. But there we go. Can you get a good shot of that? That I'm now into the back of the stitch. And I'm knitting that. So I now have two new stitches on the right needle and the old one on the left needle and I just allow that to drop off okay so you can see the new stitches there now the new stitches have a little pearl bump I kind of like that I think it, I see it as a design feature but should you want to avoid that you knit front and then instead of knitting the back you just pop that over Okay, so that is another increase. I'm not sure what the name of that particular increase is, but there's been a lot of people talking about it on Facebook lately, so I figured I'd show it. We'll just do it again. Knit front. Put your needle in as though to knit through the back of the stitch. And just... <coughs> sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully things will be back to normal by next week because I appreciate that it can be annoying for you to have me stop constantly. Okay, so I'm just knitting these two stitches here just to give myself a bit of space. Try and get us nice and focused. Okay. So now we are going to do the knit one below increase. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this stitch that's below. So it's the stitch that's hanging off the stitch that's on the needle, if that makes sense. This one right here and we're just going to pop it up onto the right needle at least this is how i do it it's the easiest way that i've found to do it and this is all about making it easier on ourselves and then we just knit it and we can just knit the one that's after it as well 
So, see it there. We do have two stitches coming out of one, so it's almost invisible. But if we come back here to the ones with the, to the knit front and back, sorry, try and focus again. I really do need a better camera, okay. So you can see the ones with the knit front and back have the little pearl bump. We can see the ones where we knit into the front and then put the needle into the back and then just popped it onto the needle. That does not have a pearl bump. And then knit one below, you know, unless the pattern is specifying, whichever one you decide to do, it's not going to make a huge difference between knitting one below or doing the knit front and then just popping the back onto the, the next needle. Onto the next needle? Onto the right needle. Okay. So just to show you knit one below again, I'm picking up the stitch from below and popping it onto the left needle. I'm actually using my thumb to hold onto the original stitch just so that I have a little bit of space between the two. And then I'm just knitting them as I normally would. And there we go. So that's it. There are some other increases. This is not the complete set of increases, but I think it's probably enough for today, enough of a selection. There we go. And you can't really see any of them. Well, you can see, look, even from here, you can see the pearl bump of the knit front and back. Now, I like to use that on uh, raglan jumpers or raglan sweaters, if you prefer. But I like to use it for the raglan increase because I think that the little bumps, they kind of make a diagonal line when you're doing it. And I just think that looks really pretty. But your mileage may vary on that. So I would encourage you to play around with different increases, find which ones work for you and go with that. So if there is anything that you'd like me to do in the next technical section, by all means, do let me know. I, I'd really, really love to hear from you because I'd like to know that what I'm doing is actually useful for you. So if there is a particular technique that you want to try out and you haven't been able to find clear instruction, by all means, let me know and I'll give it a try. So just as always, another reminder to please like and subscribe. And if you'd, if you've really, really enjoyed it, if you wanted to share the video, that would be wonderful. It'll really help me get out there. And I do appreciate any help that I can get. Um, so I think that's it for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Take care.